Greetings and welcome to Inmates for Change. My name is Jones and I am the founder, CEO of the 501c3 not-for-profit Inmates for Change. Our motto is breaking the bondage of destructive thinking. Tonight I want to welcome you in because I want to offer you some of the lineup of the services that we provide with Path to Purpose and the Flair, which is the female leadership and image reconstruction um, component initiatives that we offer along the services of reentry. So for those of you who are tuning in, thank you, and let me just give you an idea of what we do. We offer reentry services for individuals who are coming home from incarceration. We also work with individuals who are in the community and they have felony convictions in their background. Our position is offering services and or resources where individuals can successfully reintegrate back into community, family, society, and corporate America. Now along that line of retransitioning and coming back in, our individuals who are coming home who are labeled uh, returning citizens face a barrage of problems, situations, challenges, and adversities during the time that they're trying to make sense of it all on life speed at life terms. So in therapy and treatment type of environment, we call it living life on life terms and at life speed. So nothing is standing around waiting and these individuals are always sometimes caught off guard with some of the adversities and challenges that they face. Our contact information, let me make sure I'm getting it here clear so that we can see what we're looking at here. There we go. Inmates for change, 773-746-3075. That phone is open from 9.30 a.m. until 3.30 p.m. Monday through Friday. The website is wix.com slash inmatesforchange.org. And we accept email at inmatesforchange at gmail.com. Some of the things I want to do tonight is introduce you all to the services and lineup that I mentioned at the top of the show. What we offer at Inmates for Change, I'm going to read it so I don't forget anything, are interpersonal skills, conflict resolution, critical thinking, forward thinking, teamwork. We also do self-image. We also offer relationships and um, some of the inner workings of intimacy in relationships that happen that lead to a dysfunctional relationship. That is stuff that we try to introduce to our clients about how to overcome that type of setup or setting in the relationship or a budding relationship. So some of the things that we want to get right out to you right now. Let me just get started. We offer a component that is critical thinking. And what it says here is, what is critical thinking? And critical thinking means making reasoned judgments that are logical and well thought out. Maybe I can bring this down just one more. I'm going to trust that that's enough for us to work with from there. I'm hoping that my people who are viewing tonight can see it. Critical thinking means making reasoned judgments that are logical and well thought out. And what that simply means is that we're going to have situations where we need to be reasoning through the intricacies and the details of whatever a situation may be. We want to try to resolve uh, problems that we come across without resorting to violence or threats of violence. We want to be able to push through until we break through without feeling that I'm a failure and I don't have any self-worth. And this is what your critical thinking skills are. Most times, a lot of individuals who are coming through have not had the opportunity to be introduced properly to how to respond as opposed to react to certain stimuli from the outside. Anytime someone doesn't agree with what an individual is doing or saying, that individual flies off the handle and that kind of thing. And what's the first thing you probably hear is that this individual has anger issues or they don't take well to people telling them no and this type of thing. Well, that's part of what we teach through critical thinking. Critical thinking, I need to know some of the details that are involved with how to get through or navigate safely. The next card that I have is, what is analytical thinking? 
And analytical thinking is a critical component of visual thinking that gives one the ability to solve problems quickly and effectively. Now, instead of all of that rest of this jargon that's on here, let me give you a perfect example. Let's say you're getting ready to cross the street. The light is about to change. There's a car coming that's going at a higher rate of speed that you think or perceive that the car can stop at a reasonable rate of space to let you cross the street safely. My analytical thinking skills would be, ah, uh, better wait until this guy comes to a stop before I step into the street. Or, I'm a pedestrian, I have the right of way, and I can just walk out there and whatever comes, comes. That kind of thing. So they, you know, we used to have a thing when I was a kid. Uh, if you hit me today with your car, I'll be driving it tonight. Evidently, as kids, we did not know that a car weighed 1,200 pounds, you know, and coming at a force of 30 plus miles an hour against our 60 to 80 pound flesh and bones. It, it just was unrealistic thinking as far as a child goes, but that was the kind of thing that we were working with <laughs> as children. So with the analytical thinking, we teach an individual how to overcome some of the situations and barriers that they're going to be facing while they are visualizing the environment that they're in and what could possibly happen at the end of what goes on with my thinking, my action, and my behavior. The third piece that we offer in the lineup that we have tonight is interpersonal interaction. Interpersonal interaction is learning to speak respectfully to others and express themselves without any antisocial outbursts. But the, the card here states that it's an interpersonal interaction and it's a broad term. It's often used to ask how good they are at operating in a team environment. You know, when you start using your interpersonal skills, you're basically talking with someone respectfully. You want them to treat you with respect. You want to listen to what they're saying. You want to agree or disagree with a valid point. You don't necessarily want to just go along with someone because they're standing in front of you speaking, but you also don't want to be knowing that everything and they can't get a word in. That's interpersonal interaction. The thing that we have to understand is that inter inter interpersonal interaction encompasses communication skills, body language, your tone of voice, your listening skills, as I just stated, and any other verbal or non-verbal communication. So when we're doing interpersonal interaction with individuals that we're speaking with, if we're trying to elevate ourselves, we need to get that neighborhood tongue out of our mouth. You know what I'm saying, you know what I'm saying, you know what I'm saying, you know, this, that, and you is, and this kind of thing, which is uh, for one of the worst misnomers I can give it is uh, Ebonics. And <laughs> Ebonics is something that wherever it came from, it's a descriptive about an, in an individual who does not have a mastery of what we used to call the King's English. So you, you're speaking slang in a language that's familiar with the community that you come in or the uh, environment that you're raised in and that type of thing. So people that you have an intimate relationship being someone that you've been knowing since the second grade all the way up through high school and adulthood, you talk to them a certain way that you don't have to be corporate tongue when you're speaking with them. And this is the type of thing that we're speaking about when we talk about interpersonal interaction and how we interact with each other with our communication skills. And these are, again, these are components that are inside the initiative with Inmates for Change, The Path to Purpose, and The Flair, F-L-A-I-R, Female Leadership and Image Reconstruction. Now we're going to look to another card here and let me give you a chance to see what we're doing here. We also offer behavior modification. And behavior modification states that the alteration of behavioral patterns through the use of such learning techniques as biofeedback and positive or negative reinforcement. Now some of you out there may be asking, what is biofeedback? Biofeedback is the part of us that happens in our psychological, physiological, emotional, and mental capacities of our bodies and our brain. 
So behavior modification, what we used to use as corporate punishment or corporate discipline back in the days when I was coming through, when it was acceptable behavior to give your child a spanking at school, in church, at the grocery store, on the street, if the child was getting out of line, you had a full community around the parent that was supportive of keeping the child in line because the child doesn't know what's best for them. And the parent does. Now, behind that, we develop researchers, lawyers, doctors, business owners, and, and the like. You hear a lot of us at 60 plus years old. At, I, I think it runs at, as early as 50 years old and through. We've got this old school kind of mindset about how to discipline um, the children. And I do the same with my own grandchildren. You know, when I was raising my own kids, who are now all college graduates and they've got their own homes and their own businesses and they're doing fine, we only had two rules in the house. Rule number one was do what you were told. Rule number two was always remember rule number one. And you'd be okay with pops because if you got out of line, then you knew you had to have something to get your behavior modified. That's how I would like to say it. We're going to also look at what we offer with Inmates for Change, Path to Purpose and Flair by way of conflict resolution. Now conflict resolution is learning to find a peaceful and productive solution to disagreements. My card states that conflict resolution is a way for two or more parties to find peaceful solution to disagreements amongst themselves. The disagreement may be personal, financial, political, or emotional. When a dispute arises, often the best course of action is negotiation to resolve the disagreement. Now, that sounds fine on a card. But if I'm not taught how to respond properly and constructively to conflict, then the first thing I probably think of is probably putting my hands on someone to forcefully have them see my point of view. And that's not something that we can keep ourselves out of trouble with, especially as returning citizens, individuals with felony convictions in our background, and just by today's standards. We have to understand that peaceful conflict resolution is a must if we are going to try to survive along the lines of communicating with each other and maintaining the common goal. Now, at Inmates for Change, we also offer uh, spiritual connectedness. As we go to spiritual connectedness, my card shows, let me pull it up a little bit for you. There are four parts of spiritual connectedness. There's a physical, which is the attraction, genetic quality, basic need to mate or procreate. Two is emotional, being in love, having feelings, seduction, caring. Three is psychological, valuing attributes, personality, intelligence, and your social status. And four is spiritual, the attraction, to the universal life force of connectedness and becoming part of it. Though that sounds like a whole lot when we're in these workshops that we offer at Inmates for Change, Path to Purpose and Flair, we break this stuff down so that you can absorb it. We don't try to stay heady with the information. We want you to know that spiritually we're all connected. Now when we get into religion that's a completely different story. I'm speaking about the connection that you feel when you know that you and someone see eye to eye or you know how you meet someone and you all seem to just seem like you've been knowing each other for years. That is what the spiritual connectedness is. And it also plays a part along the lines of my physical, my emotional, and my psychological uh, wellness. It really does. Because as human beings, we are social creatures. As, spirituals, as spiritual beings, we are loving creatures. We have to understand this so that we can move further along our journey along with the people that we're going to see while we're encountering some of these changes and some of these uh, adversities as well as the challenges that come with something new. Those of us who are attempting to change our lives and are giving it a genuine effort, Inmates for Change is dedicated to breaking the bondage of destructive thinking. We will go to the wall with you about learning how to reprocess your process of thinking. So we all know 
that we need to get some spiritual connectedness. Not that what we call uh, foxhole prayers, where we, oh, Lordy, Lordy, when something is going wrong, we all of a sudden we want to start praying now, you know, and now we're asking for a favor. I'm talking about spiritual connectedness where I'm feeling love for the person that's standing next to me or people who are around. You know, I need to know that the universal life force of connectedness, I need to be a part of that. I really do. I need to be a part of it. And by being a part of it, I will have a demeanor that's a lot, a lot more calmer. I'll be able to be a little bit more compassionate, a little bit more sensitive, and a lot more fair-minded. So these are part of the program um, curriculums that we offer. And I've got another one here that I didn't get a chance to mention, and that is my forward thinking. Now, forward thinking, let me go to it. I need to back it up just a bit. Forward thinking is thinking about trying to figure out goals of tomorrow and then trying to find the methods of tomorrow to achieve them. Some of you all may look at um, forward thinking as, I know I need to get a job. Well, I know to get a job, I need to have a resume. I know I need to have some education. The, best, the basic educational requirement today is a high school diploma. And that's about to get bumped up a little bit to associate's degree and even a bachelor's degree. So those of us who are out there in the viewing audience and in the world who want to aspire to be something a level higher than just maintenance, labor, or grunt work, I'll call it. We need to start developing forward thinking skills. We need to understand that I need to plan my future one step at a time. The way that you do forward planning, uh, forward thinking, is you see the goal that you want to attain. In my case, let's just say I want a new car. And I know I need to put certain steps in play before I can successfully secure the goal. One of the things I need to understand is I need to shop around for what kind of price is it. I need to see what kind of um, creature comforts come with it. Air conditioning, heated seats, tenant windows, that type of thing. I need to understand how much my maintenance is going to cost on it a year. I also need to understand how much my insurance is going to be. Also, transportation and maintenance costs. All of this comes in. So all of this starts backing up to how am I going to get the money to get this going? Well, I've got to find employment. I've got to find gainful employment. But I also have to be in a position where when I do interview for an, a position, I can assure the interviewer that I'm qualified to fulfill the position. I want to take a few minutes, if it's okay with you all, and just give you an idea of some of the things that when we were out giving out the... Um, during the program, we ran into a few people, uh, organizations who offered some information for us. This one says, I've had the pleasure of working with Mr. Jones during the month of January 2012 through June 2012. Mr. Jones brought his professionalism and experience to enlightening our scholars. Jones implemented a behavior modification program in grades 6 through 12. The group of students, 125 in total, were to attend a class that was held after school from 3.45 to 4.30. Now, as I read down, of the 125 students who made the list of detention class, Mr. Jones was given the opportunity to work with the groups 20 to 25 at a time in the classroom. Well, let me go a little further. In a classroom atmosphere where we introduce subjects that focused on unacceptable behaviors and how to think before you act scenarios. What happened here? By the end of the semester, there were only 47 students assigned to the detention list. A 58.75% reduction in detention in over six months. So this program is effective. Um, here's another one. I'm writing on behalf of Mr. Jones, who began as a volunteer with our program. Mr. Jones has organized activities that focused on emotional, physical, and intellectual development of youth. I'm very pleased with his ability to engage youth. He exhibited thorough concentration to detail and dedication to our organizational goals. So, 
That's the second one. Here's the third one. And then I can be done with it. Mr. Jones understands how to build relationships for middle school students. His passion and dedication has been proven here. Our goal is to make sure we provide initiatives that will help students enjoy the learning experiences in school. So this is part of what we have here. But these gentlemen, the people at this place, they were saying here, unfortunately, due to budget cuts and funds, we were only able to offer Mr. Jones's program in an after-school enrichment program. Now, that's the after-school program that we put with Path to Purpose. Path to Purpose also has a sister component, and that is FLAIR. Female Leadership and Image Reconstruction. This one is headed up by my wife who teaches young ladies from ages about nine, I believe, through adult, how to think along the lines of feminine thinking. So there's a male brain, there's a female brain. The male brain is a reflexive type of individual. He, you know, we as guys, we see something and we act. Women see something and they think it through. What will happen if? What if this doesn't go there, then I need a backup plan and that kind of thing. That's women with their analytical thinking. And guys, in a lot of cases, we tend to get a little bit, well, I know me, let me speak personally, get a little impatient with their process of thinking when all we're looking for is a result. So, as we're coming to a close, I want to thank you all for taking the time out to tune in to us and let you know what we're doing at Inmates for Change. Here's another card with us and this is Inmates for Change. Our number is 773-746-3075. 9.30-3.30 Monday through Friday. The website wix.com slash inmatesforchange.org and email is accepted at inmatesforchange at gmail. I would like to also add with this um, Inmates for Change, Path to Purpose, and Flair. If you need a supplement program to your organization, then and their existing program, consider us. You know, give give us a shot. We we would be more than happy to come out and show you what we can offer your client base. The other side of that is. It's about time I'm seeing in my production booth that my producer is giving me the sign. I would like to thank you for listening in tonight. And may God be with you. Keep us in mind. Inmates for change. Breaking the bondage of destructive thinking. Have a good night.